I'm not sure why God has put this particular message on my heart tonight. I don't know if he's directing this at me. I don't know if he's directing it at my staff. And I, I'm not talking about pastor, I'm talking my, my total staff. Uh, school, church, King's Kids. Uh, or you as volunteers, workers. But I am reminded tonight that the work of the Lord Jesus Christ is far more stressful than it used to be. There's a lot of reasons for that. I think that in some ways uh, the uh, roadside has been littered in the last couple of decades with uh, people who have quit on God, burned out. We have fewer workers per capita, so to speak, in a lot of churches. And fewer people are doing more. Although I would be the first to say that this is the most volunteering church I have ever been in. And I thank you for that. Rarely do we ever have uh, a need uh, that goes unmet. Uh, if I were to think of one of the most challenging needs that uh, is a, an ongoing need, and that is probably for nursery and kid workers on Friday night in our U program. Uh, but um, tonight, I feel like I need to address this, and, and uh, you know, I, I have been tired. To tell you the truth, I cannot do what I used to do when I first came here. When I first came here, I had a lot of energy. I was 31 years younger. I had hair that was not gray. There was less of me, and I think my mind was probably in better shape. I look at uh, uh, Brother Mitchell, Brother Curry, and these guys, and I see myself years ago, <laughs> years ago. And uh, it's, it's easy if you do not manage your stress levels to get weary. Weary is not a good thing. In fact, God says it's not a good thing. Tired, God understands. Weary, God warns us against. A lot of things can cause a, a person to grow weary. Uh, putting in too many hours, trying to cram too many things into those hours. The work not going well. Workers, volunteers that work with you uh, falling by the wayside. Or maybe the work itself that you do is just not going that great. Yeah, people stress. I often thought, what a wonderful, it would be the best job on earth uh, pastoring if you didn't have to pastor people. It would be a, a wonderful thing. But uh, the, the title of this tonight is Tired But Not Weary. Tired But Not Weary. Several key words in tonight's uh, check, uh, uh, test, and I just, not in order, but I want to call your attention to two of them. Verse number 10, you have the, the, the word opportunity. Despite the darkness that is in our land, opportunity is not less than it used to be. It doesn't matter uh, uh, about the laws and the, the Constitution and the freedoms we have concerning the gospel. You'll have to realize that in many lands and in many eras of time since Christ, uh, the gospel flourished when it was against the law to talk to anybody about the Lord. To do so would be to lose your head. I'm reminded uh, of what we learned when China opened the doors uh, under pressure or be kicked out of the World Trade Organization. You have to have some freedom of religion without persecution. And so, uh, not that you can go to China and just start evangelizing, you cannot. But people are there in this communist country, who would ever have thought, they are free to become Christians. They are free to declare that openly and publicly, as fact, I, I am a Christian. They don't have to hide it anymore. And communism came along, and they burnt Bibles, and they killed Christians, and they uh, uh, got rid of, sent uh, 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 preachers off to prisons and, and to the Arctic Circle and anywhere, and they said, now we'll teach 
uh, science and the logic, there is no God. And if you are well read, you have read where China went into a political shock when they passed this these laws. You could be openly a Christian, though you can't just witness the people on the streets. They were shocked to find that there were millions and millions of Christians in that country that had been meeting in secret. I think that darkness really provides a greater opportunity to be a light. I don't know how dark it's going to get. I don't know where our freedoms are going to go. I don't know what's going to happen in America, but my Lord God Almighty is still on the throne. We learned this morning that uh, we not only have uh, a, a, a sovereign commission, but we have a solemn responsibility to rise up to the occasion of the gospel. I believe that this church and churches like it provide a great opportunity for its people. You have the opportunity to have a godly fellowship here. You don't have to worry so much about the kind of crowd you run with here, although even in church, you have to be careful who you make your inner circle of friends because in every church, there are people with serious spiritual needs. And why wouldn't there be? People with spiritual needs need to be here. People with sin problems need to be here. This is a hospital. This is where they can get help. And so you gotta, we got to pray for each other and edify each other and encourage each other. This is a great place to fellowship. It's a great place for recreation. You know, God has put the need in most of us for recreation, isn't that right? And I know that from time to time, people think of Bayview Baptist Church as a social church. Thank you for the compliment. Where do you want people to socialize? Down at the tavern? You know? Where do you want people to socialize who name the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? This is where the greatest opportunity for us to fellowship, to have recreation together, to have activities together. Although I don't know when the last time the good timers played basketball in the gym. The opportunities are there if they want it. They don't. (laughs) But I... I love it. Every Sunday night, the men of the church who want to, and we have men that have the alarm codes, and they can lock up. I'm not waiting for them. They play basketball in the gym. Why not? It's their gym, too. It's our, our gym. And uh, they, they do that. We're have, uh, they're having an activity tonight, a snack for the teens uh, and the um, uh, the parents, some of the parents have signed up to be at that. It's going to be a lot of good food. I don't know what they do to snack. I've not uh, been to one. Uh, but what a great opportunity. By the way, isn't this a wonderful group of young people? I really, really enjoy them in the school. I do. Uh, I think there is real, real goodness uh, in these kids, although some of their parents may doubt that. The school is a great opportunity to fellowship. Although if there was one t- technology I could stri- I w- if, if God would let me strike with lightning, get rid of it forever, it'd be uh, social networking. That has been a blessing and a curse, but it's been a little bit more of a curse than it has been a blessing. Amen, Brother T. Amen, Brother T. Bo. <laughs> the, the, the weakness of the social network is people don't say nice things about each other. You know, and you can get discouraged, get your feelings hurt. We have an opportunity to serve the Lord. We have an opportunity to carry on uh, our part in the Lord's commission. We have the bus ministry and blitzing and and door-to-door and 
Sunday school and King's Kids and Pirate Club and on and on and on and on and on. But our work is far from done, isn't it? Far from done. Now, the other word that I want to draw your attention to is in verse number nine. It's the word weary. It's the word weary. God understands that people who are active in the Lord's work will become tired. But he's concerned and cautions us not to become weary in well-doing. What is weary? Weary is the desire to quit. And that's true in many things in the world. It's true in the church, too. It's a desire to quit. There's a lot of avenues whereby one can be weary. I would say that the biggest uh, source of weariness is just people. <laughs> people problems. Peer problems. Click problems. Critical problems. Scornful people. It's easy to become weary. Criticisms, disappointments, old age. How many of you are really super excited about your old age tonight? You know, here's the thing. Somebody asked me uh, earlier, says, how are you, preacher side? Good. And they said, is that all? I said, that's as good as it gets at my age. <laughs> weary is more than just being tired. Tired is an ailment of the body and the mind. Weariness is an ailment of the heart and the spirit. Tiredness says, I need a rest. Weariness says, I have no more desire to keep going. Tiredness says, I need a breather. Weariness says, I have no more to give. I'm always amazed at, at pastors who take, have you heard the word sabbatical before? I didn't even know that was in the Baptist vocabulary until about, oh, in the last 10 years, I'm hearing of more and more independent Baptist preachers taking a sabbatical. Um, I've tried to discover what that really is. Uh, the best I can come up with is it's a paid leave of absence. <laughs> and they go and they take sabbaticals for two weeks, three weeks. And they say that, uh, I, I don't know what they do. They rest their mind, their soul, or I don't, I don't know why they do that. Probably on the golf course. I don't know. But I know one thing, they're fighting weariness. That's what's happening. Even one of the great, well-known, super well-known preachers in the land in the last six years has had to take two sabbaticals a month each. By the way, don't send me on a sabbatical. I would be bored to death. Tiredness says, I need a break. Weariness says, I'm broken. I can't continue. Tiredness says, I need to get away for a few days. Weariness says, I doubt if I'll be back. Tiredness says, Lord, help me be patient with negative people. Weariness says, I've had enough. I quit. Well, you know, I, I can see where they're coming from. I, I was teasing a, a young uh, pastor uh, not too long ago and uh, said, what is the one quality, what is the one thing I need to m the most as I uh, start pastoring my church? I said, you need to be bulletproof. <laughs> really? I mean, people will shoot at you nonstop. Say, well, I can, I can handle the crowd out there. I said, I didn't say anything about the crowd out there. I said, I'm talking about the crowd in there. <laughs> yeah, 
you know, I was half teasing him, but half I wasn't. And I'm fine, you know, I've, at my age, I've learned to, to deal with that. It's been only been going on for all 31 years that I've been here. Some people just, I don't know, they, uh, they have sort of a spiritual uh, concealed to carry permit. Every once in a while, they just have to blast the preacher out of his saddle. I asked a, a, a very dear pastor to me who retired when I, I thought he was really, it was really kind of weary. I couldn't understand and had left this church that was of some size and a great Christian school and and took a, a little tiny church in the middle of nowhere. I, and I said, why did you do that? He said, people, I'm just too old to take it. Well, you know what? Um, here's the thing. God said, don't get weary. If you get weary, you're going to quit, and you're going to get out of the will of God. God says, I'll help you. I'll help you. Just a little farther, and you'll be home. You will reap the harvest if you do not faint. There is strength and refreshing to be gotten from the Lord, but we must not faint. You know this text. In Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28, it says, Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. To them that uh, have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. I think the thing that hit me in the face the most from this text is weariness is not an old person's problem. Even youth faint and quit. Weariness... Just say, I'm tired of all this. I, I'm quitting. You're not just tired. You're weary. You're in a very dangerous spiritual point in your life. And the Lord said, even the youths will faint. Now, some of them. And so it is important that all of us know how to deal with weariness with the Lord's help. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I want to give you five things you can do. I'm not going to preach these uh, per se. Probably I'm, going to, I'm mostly going to just uh, give them in a way you can write them down in your life journals. But here are five things you can do to deal with weariness. Number one, Clearly, especially for those of you who are always, always busy. Now, this message probably isn't needed by lazy people. They'll never get tired, let alone weary. But number one, do not spread yourself too thinly. I've seen more new Christians do this right out of the right out of the starting gate, and burn out before they ever get started, and you don't see them anymore. They got so much zeal, they want to be in everything. Man, they want to work on a bus. They want to help in King's Kids. They want to work in Children's Church. They want to do this. They want to do that. They want to do this. They want to do that. And you can't hold them down. And the preachers have to say, look, look, you're going to pace yourself, or you're going to burn out. And, and they don't believe you. They don't believe you. Not me. Man, I've got energy to burn. Yeah? 
Well, energy burns out too. It's like a, a, a propane torch. It'll burn bright uh, or hot, but pretty soon that cylinder is going to run out of propane. Do not spread yourself too thinly. Listen to this. You can do 10 things poorly or you can do a couple things really good. I hope all of you know, will remember that. You can do 10 things. Anybody can, can hold down 10 responsibilities and, and be mediocre about getting it done. You can do 10 things poorly or you can do a couple of things really well. You know you have a problem if you say, oh, yeah, I'm really involved in there, in, in, in that. I'm, I'm in everything. Ever heard somebody say that? I'm really involved at my church. Man, I'm in everything. Well, I don't like to hear that because they're not going to last. They'll get tired first. And when you're tired, you can't deal with people problems as well as when you weren't tired. And tiredness will become turned to weariness, and weariness causes people to quit. Number one, do not spread yourself too thinly. Number two, maybe I'll preach next Sunday night. Some of you need to spread somewhere. <laughs> I'm not, I don't know what I'll preach next Sunday night. Number two, stay excited about your assignments while praying for everyone else's. Concentrate in your own area. You can't afford to get involved in other people's areas. What'll happen? Well, you have all of your concerns and stresses, and then when you get involved in their areas, you add all of theirs to yours and you've doubled your stress load. Don't do that. If you work in the nursery, don't worry about what's going on in the buses. If you work on the buses, don't worry about what's going on in the nursery. Now, I just chose those two. I, I'm not aware of any problems between those two departments. Those were the most extreme ones I could think of. Listen, and this doesn't go on, but I'm telling you that uh, those who work in the nursery would have enough to concentrate on without saying, did you hear what happened on that one bus this morning? Listen, if it was one of our buses, it happened. I promise. It wasn't anybody else's bus. It was our bus somewhere. Why? Listen, listen, these kids are not coming out of church homes. They're not. They didn't grow up in church. Some of them were getting finally. They can't ride our bus until they're, what, five, five, five years old. So some, some of them are literally growing up in, in church. But they're not growing up in Christian homes. We're their lifeline. Are they perfect? No, and you'll never change it because you're not either. We'll do the best we can. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, once in a while, we have to just, because a, a, a bus kid is just destroying the whole atmosphere, we can't afford to bring them here. I wish we had a special program just for them, but you can't bring down the whole effort because one is... Uh, Hyper bazooka. <laughs> you can't afford to get involved in other people's areas. I can't believe the number of comments that I get from people who are concerned about what's going on in the Christian school who have no kids in the Christian school. In fact, they have no kids. They're all adults. Why do you do that to yourself? Why do you do that to yourself? You cannot afford to be critical about uh, people in other areas of, of work. So, number one, do not spread yourself too thinly. Number two, stay out of everybody else's department. You'll live longer. <laughs> you'll, you'll, just, you'll die of a ripe old age 
But if you, if you worry about everything that has nothing to do with you, you're going to die young. It's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. Number three, stay motivated by gravitating to people who are motivated. Stay motivated by gravitating to people who are motivated. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Wherefore, seeing we are uh, also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. God said you have witnesses. We are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. In other words, people worth being around. Stay away from the demotivators. They come in all colors and shapes. There's a one-eyed purple pessimist. He's always saying, that'll never work. Stay away from that person. There's the lizard. I don't gossip why everything I say is always true. There's, a, there's the pecker beak, beak vulture. Loves to pick people apart with criticism. Here's another demotivator, not especially dangerous unless you're hanging around him. There's the pot-bellied shuffler, always walking around with the hands in the pocket, doing nothing. That's not who you want to copy. Now, there's some good people who are pot bellies, and they're pretty busy. I know one or two. Stay away from the bubble head. He knows it all. Never wrong. There's the snake in the grass. Disloyal to the church and the church staff and the pastor. You don't need to be around that kind of a person. You just don't. They'll destroy you. There's Mr. Athlete's foot, always kicking people when they're down. There's the hoot owl, hoots a lot, but never does a lot. There's the three blind mice. They never tell you when something is going right. They only speak up when something is going wrong. They're blind to everything that is good. There are people who are constant, incessant critics, almost to the point where they suffer from an OCD, an obsessive compulsive disorder. They just have to tear everybody up all the time. It is their nature. You don't need to be around those kind of people. So, here's five good things. Number one, do not spread yourself too thinly. What are we trying to prevent tonight? Getting tired? No. Because if you're doing what you need to be doing, you're going to be tired sometimes. If you're never tired, you're not doing enough. We're trying to keep you from getting weary or you quit. Number one, do not spread yourself too thinly. Number two, stay excited about your assignment Number three, stay motivated by gravitating to people who are motivated. Number four, I said there were five. I lied. There must have been five at one time. Maybe when I was thinking about this message, and I only managed to get four of them written down. Four, finally, keep on serving the Lord even when you do not feel like it. I learned that one from Brother Hiles years ago. I'll never forget when he preached that in pastor school. Man, I was young. I wasn't even, oh man, I wasn't even in Illinois yet. It was so long ago. And he said this. If you will keep on serving the Lord when you don't feel like it, God will see that you are serious about serving the Lord 
and he'll make sure you don't stay that way. He'll make sure you feel like it again. He said, if you have a Sunday school class and you don't feel like teaching anymore, but you know you're supposed to be, keep on doing it, even though you don't feel like being a teacher anymore. And God will restore after he sees that you are serious and you're not a quitter. He will restore your feeler. Is that a good sentence? First Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be you steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Now, I've been the pastor, I've been here for 31 years, been on the pastoral staff for most of those, uh, most of those I was the head pastor, almost all of them. And I can tell you, there were lots of times, and some not so long ago, I didn't feel like pastoring anymore. And I could tell that I was getting too close to being weary. And I dealt with that spiritually. And I found out something. What Dr. Howell said is still true. You keep doing it even when you don't feel like it. And one day God will see you're not a quitter and you're serious about uh, serving God. You'll just wake up one, more, uh, one morning and you'll feel like it. Say, so how do you know when you feel like it, when breakfast is the first thing on your mind? If you feel like eating, you're feeling pretty good. I really am enjoying pastoring right now. Oh, I tease my, uh, my wife from time to time, you know, about retiring my daughters, or I'll say, boy, that little old country church looks better all the time, and she always says the same thing. Yeah, you'd ruin it and try to grow it. The wayside is already too littered with former workers. I don't want you to be the next one. You've been serving God for a long time now. You've been active in the church for a long time now. Don't be the next castaway after you have preached to others. Castaways only come for one reason. They got weary and they quit. Don't be the next one. Don't be the next one. When you see someone who is getting tired, instead of preaching at them, pray for them. Instead of criticizing them, encourage them to take a little breather. And by the way, it's okay. To get to a quiet place with nobody else around and just cry once in a while. God's real good at wiping away the tears. Don't quit. Manage it. If you want some encouragement, come to one of our staff, come to me. I maybe help you with a little game plan just to, 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 to manage it and reduce the stress a little bit and, and get back uh, where, you, where you really feel like serving the, serving the Lord again. But don't quit. Don't quit. Maybe the best is right around the corner. And you'll miss it by an inch. You'll miss it by an inch. Let's pray. Lord God, tonight, don't let anybody else quit. Don't let another Sunday school teacher quit. 
Don't let another bus driver quit. Don't let another school teacher quit because they are weary. Don't let another pastor quit because he's weary. I know that you want to use us, and this country needs us because it needs you. And we just need to hold together. I believe that the, you may be coming soon for us in the rapture. But I pray that we'll live our lives like it could happen this week. Help us to stay excited. Help us to, to stay together and hold together. And Lord, some are tired. That's okay. They may need just a little bit of rest. But I pray for, the, for those in our, our church tonight who might be very close to being weary. God, don't let that happen. Please, Lord, help them not to become weary in well-doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Shall we stand together? As always, the altar is open. If you'd like to come and just spend some time, as the music begins now, you're welcome to come. <laughs>